I've actually currently tried putting them in pants and this is how it looks like. I think they dry really well just like Holbein and uh, I'll be putting it at my Shopee store. So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today in this video, I've chosen to review a set from a popular watercolor brand and that is none other than the Paul Rubens watercolors. If you can remember, a few months ago, I've already reviewed a 24 color half pan set from Paul Rubens but today I have chosen a special tube set from them and that is the floral set. I got the set overseas with the help of a friend on mid 2021 my friend did not charge me the exact amount but if i remember correctly the price was less than 2500 philippine pesos or roughly 50 us dollars and this particular set the flower set is really hard to find but i believe this is also available at amazon us and i'll be linking at the description box all the sites that i can find so you can just access them directly but before we try the paints out let's first check out the packaging and the box of this set and of course in front you'll see this beautiful floral painting and here is the signature of the artist and here it says artists transparent watercolor fine artists watercolors and it says here also flower color matching um, song 24 8 ml and here is the logo of paul rubens and it says on this side shanghai awen art materials so this is the same company that makes the uh, half pan set and uh, the pretty excellent set and at the back we have here a preview of the colors that are included in this set so they have here the number code of the color the Chinese name of the color and the English name and also we have here some QR codes the company name and some more details and numbers and we have here the same information that we are finding in front so now let's open our box I've already opened this months ago and I've already actually swatched it and so here we have uh, the same information sheet that they have provided in the uh, half pan set and also in the pretty excellent set and also in the uh, Owen um, student sets so they are just uh, simply using the same um, information sheet so here are our tubes the palette have dedicated slots for the tubes but I think the slots are not enough to hold the tubes enough so I think they should uh, place some sort of a cushion on top of uh, the tubes so that they won't move. Now let's check out an individual tube. So their tubes are made out of aluminum with a plastic cap and in front you'll find here the number code of the color, the English name and I think the Chinese name of the color and also it says here artists watercolor. We have also here the logo of Paul Rubens and says here 8 ml. At the back we have here the pigment code, the transparency rating and the light fastness rating and of course the company name and it also says here it conforms to ASTM D4236. And here they repeated again the pigment information PR254 pigment pyrrole so they also provided here the name of the pigment. Now let's compare our 8ml Paul Rubens tubes against the other brands that we have. So let's begin with the Schmincke's 5ml tube. We also have 7ml from Isaro. We also have 10ml from Van Gogh. A 12ml from Mimery Blue. A 15ml from Mgram. And 18ml from Old Holland. And now for our swatches and sample painting, of course as always I'm using Arches 185 cold press cotton paper and for my brush I'm using my Nevskaya Palitra Kolinsky brush and my silver black velvet flat brush. So now I just noticed that this shouldn't be umber, this should be burnt brown so i need to fix this so we're now done dotting down our paints no binder separation issues so i'm very happy now let's start swatching let's begin with py3 permanent lemon yellow so that is a very vibrant yellow 
Next, we go to PY65, Permanent Yellow Medium. So this is also a vibrant mid-yellow and I think it's semi-transparent. Now let's go to Nickel Yellow, PY150. This is my all-time favorite yellow pigment because it's very transparent but at the same time it's very strong and in mass tone it's warm but in washes it becomes a cool yellow so I think it's very versatile so now let's go to PY83 Indian yellow so this is the warm yellow here now let's have uh, the permanent orange yellow which is PO73 and PY74 and this is the only orange color in the set next we have PR254 and it's Chinese red I believe this is spiral red and this color is naturally somewhat semi opaque and we have here PV19 rose red and this is the main cool red in the set PV19 is the ever reliable cool red pigment and of course your floral set will never be complete without a cool red and for another cool red in this set we have a peach light using PR146 we don't usually see this color and I think it functions as an opera pink color so for very luminous colors like these we do not expect you know good light fastness but upon checking artistcreation.com the rating ranges from 2 to 4 according to ASTM next we have PR122 magenta and this is a uh, deep version of a PR122 and it looks like almost Tinakidon Violet next color is permanent violet Oops, I forgot letter T in permanent sorry about that so this is PV23 permanent violet and it's super deep almost like black in mass tone so we need to lighten that to see the color next is lavender and this is using pb29 pv3 and pw6 and since this color has white it is expected to be more on the opaque side but i really agree this color should really be here because this has lots of uses in floral paintings because many flowers have this shade next we have France Ultramarine PB29 so they're calling it as France Ultramarine not French Ultramarine so this is not an error in my part I copied what they had to uh, write in their tube so they're France Ultramarine and this is a very intense version of PB29 I'm loving it now let's have cobalt blue using PB28 which is the genuine pigment for cobalt blue so you know expensive genuine pigments such as PB28 the cobalt pigments cadmium pigments when they're present in paints I think it's one of the clues that it is an artist grade because you don't find you know expensive pigments in student grade lines because they're meant for students or for uh, you know artists in budget next is C blue using PB15 is to 3 so this is stalo blue um, green shade and yes it's super intense this looks a bit like a Prussian blue now we have indigo using PV19, PB15, and PBK6. And yes, this is also a beautiful version of indigo. Now let's have turquoise light using PB36. This is another genuine cobalt pigment. Now we have here emerald green light using PG36. 
and this is stalo green yellow shade so now let's go to hooker's green brilite i copied what they have written here so it's brilite and it uses pg17 pg17 is chrome green oxide but this green really looks like hooker's green to the point that it reminds me of the genuine hooker's green pigment pg8 yeah i love this green now this is permanent green using PG36, PY3, and PY74. This is yellow green. Now this is their version of olive green. It uses four pigments. We have here PW5, PG36, PY12, and PR101. PW5 here is weird. As this is transparent I don't sense any whites in this color let me check the tube mm, see okay so it's using PG 17 PY 83 and PR 101 no PW 5 and it's not PG 36 and PY 12 I got this pigment information online so this is incorrect and I will uh, correct this later now let's proceed to yellow sienna using PY42 and this looks like a combination of PBR7 and PY42 and yes I double checked all the other colors what I've written here are correct except for the olive green I think they might have uh, updated their formula so here is a burned brown or PBR7. I think this is the darkest brown. Next is Van Dyke Brown also using PBR7. Their Van Dyke Brown looks more of a burnt umber or actually even lighter. And our last color is Cypress Brown Deep using PBR7 also and i think this is like a raw umber now while we are waiting for our swatches to dry let's now proceed to our sample painting and by the way i have already corrected the olive green so this is now corrected to pg17 py83 and pr101 and these are the colors that i've chosen i have here permanent lemon yellow chinese red peach light cobalt blue hooker's green brilite and van dyke brown to save time i'll be speeding this video up so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment it at the comment box Now let's remove our tape. So now for the color selection, we have here four yellows, one orange, four reds. I'm counting the magenta PR122 as a red color. We have here two purples. Four blues, I'm counting the indigo as a neutral or a gray color. Then we also have four greens and four earth colors. First of all, I would like to commend the set for having 19 single pigments out of 24 colors. That gives us artists the opportunity to mix cleaner colors. 
I'm honestly very happy with the color selection. I think this would work both as a floral set and as a basic 24 color set because I find you know the primary colors pretty balanced. We have uh, four yellows, four reds, four blues. So that alone can allow you to mix a range of colors. But since I'm kind of perfectionist with color selection, I would still comment on some things. Peach Light is a very vibrant, almost luminous pink, similar to Opera, but PR146 is not perfectly light fast. It's not actually fugitive, but if you are, you know, um, painting professionally, I would suggest you to avoid this color. And if I can replace this color, I'd be happier to either have a carmine or a lilac color because I think that would be more useful for you know floral paintings and also I think I can uh, remove one of these earth colors and uh, have a Venetian red or an Indian red a reddish earth color and as you can see the colors are really alive they're really vibrant and saturated so we don't have any problems about that when it comes to the color mixability it's very fine I did not encounter any problems about it. When it comes to transparency, at first some of the yellow colors were semi-opaque but when they dried, they turned out to be more on the transparent side. So I'm happy about it. The colors that remain to be a little opaque are of course the lavender violet and the cobalt blue and of course the turquoise light and even the permanent green and the rest are more on the transparent side and yeah even the permanent lemon yellow is semi-transparent now when it comes to flow it's not anything like core so it's not very flowy it's not its main strength it actually needs help and some artists prefer that me i personally prefer paints that doesn't flow that much so that's case to case basis and that's you know based on an artist's preference now for a chalky test i'm going to be rubbing a sheet of napkin against our swatches and sample painting and if you get colors then these paints can be chalky yes i know this is not the ultimate test of chalkiness but we paint on paper therefore we need to see it on paper so let's see and i think we did not get any marks in our paper then that means the Paul Rubens floral set is not chalky. Now we have come to our most favorite part which is the comparison portion. And since we are considering the Paul Rubens watercolors as professional grade paints, let's begin first with a set of paints that are less performing which are the student grade paints. So let's begin with the best by watercolors. We also have the Dong A Creative the Symbolion watercolors, the Faber-Castell solid watercolors, the Sterling Arts watercolors, Reeves watercolors, the Giorgione watercolor cakes, the Sakura Koi pocket filled sketch box, the Montmartre Two Seasons watercolors, the Magiwa Basics, the Art Ranger watercolors, the Berkeley watercolors, the Pentel watercolors, the Prang watercolors 2007 and 2019, the Marys watercolors in half pans, we also have the Marys watercolors in tubes, the Faber Castell in tubes, the Pebeo Studio watercolors, we also have the Lefranc and Bourgeois Louvre watercolors, the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pans, the Sonnet watercolor paints, the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors, the Windsor Newton China, the Grumbacher Academy, the Superior Fan Palette watercolors, the Superior Half Pans, the Superior Foldable, the Miyahimi Solid watercolors, the Pelican Transparent watercolors, the Koinur and the Linke Brilliant watercolors, the Pretty Excellent watercolors, the Owen watercolors in metal case, the Owen watercolor cakes, the Simi Arts Semi Dry watercolors, the Simi Arts Arts Arch watercolors, the Simi Arts Solid watercolors, and the Kuretake Gansai Tambi. Now let's proceed to the professional grade paints and this set is less performing in my opinion as compared to our Paul Rubens floral set in tubes. So let's begin with Pichitrong watercolors by Silpacorn, the Kukuyo Kamlin camel watercolors but maybe if Kukuyo Kamlin had provided the pigment coats they may be on par. 
Then we also have the Mary's Masters watercolors, the Mongeo Professional watercolors, the Prima Marketing Tropicals, the Espanoleto Aquarela watercolors, and the Lucas Aquarel 1862 and the Isaro Extra Fine watercolors. Now it's time to compare our tube set against the half pan set that we reviewed months ago. I love both sets but I believe it's obvious that the Paul Rubens floral set in tubes are more vibrant. The colors are more alive. I think it's the edge of the tubes. The colors are just really popping out of the paper. It could be the color choice. I prefer the color choice in uh, the floral set but you can also compare the similar colors like for example the France Ultramarine in uh, the floral set it's more intense but I may have put more paints here given that this is you know um, straight out of the tubes so if I would choose between these two I'd go with the tube set the floral tube set now let's proceed to the artist grade sets that are I think better performing as compared to the Paul Rubens floral set in tubes. So let's begin with another floral or botanical set and that is the Holbein Botanical Art. Hmm, this is a very close match visually but hmm, pigment wise, pigment selection wise, honestly I prefer the Paul Rubens floral set because it has more single pigment colors. It has 19 single pigment colors. While in Holbein Botanical, they only have 15 single pigments. In Paul Rubens Floral Set, only one is not very light fast. Actually, even the PR122 is not very light fast. So we have here two colors that are not super light fast. While in uh, the Holbein Botanical, they have one, two, and three not so light fast color. And also, I forgot the Carmine PR83. This is a fugitive red, so be careful in using PR83. So pigment selection wise, Paul Rubens is better, but the performance of the paints, I think Holbein is still more reliable, but looking at the output, looking at the swatches, it's very comparable. Moving on is another Holbein set. We have here a 30 color set. Then we also have the blocks, extra fine. I think the colors are more intense. Then we also have the White Knights by St. Petersburg. The white knights watercolor tubes um, the Paul Rubens watercolors may appear to be more vibrant but I feel like the white knights are cleaner generally then we also have the Rembrandt luxury pocket box set then the Utrecht artist watercolors the Egal Johanny watercolors the Windsor Newton professional the core watercolors but I think the edge of Paul Rubens over core is its transparency, but the vibrancy is really on par. And of course, course flow is its main edge. Then we also have Mijello Mission Gold Class and the Pure Pigment Set, the Daniel Smith in Sticks, and the rest of my Daniel Smith watercolor sets. So now if you are gonna ask me would I recommend the Paul Rubens floral set, my answer is definitely yes. Because these paints are performing really well, obviously the colors are so vibrant, they're so alive, and they're very affordable. With the great color and pigment selection, I think this set can really work well as a floral set and also as a versatile set to any type of artist. Generally, they're transparent, they're not chalky. And the flow is manageable. Two of the colors here are not super light fast and they're the peach light and the magenta PR122 but they're not fugitive so I think they're still safe to use but if you want to be confident if you want to use this in paintings to be hang or to be sold I would suggest you to test it first. Another issue is its availability. It's not easy to find this set. If you're from the US, I think this is available at Amazon US and AliExpress. But if you're from the Philippines and you'd like to try this out, I am going to be making two or three half pan sets out of this set. And uh, I'll be putting it at my Shopee store. And I'll be putting all the useful links at the description box. So please do check it out. So I think that's all for today. If you have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, please don't hesitate to comment it below. 
So again, thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.